Good afternoon, good afternoon, and welcome to the 800 Credit Score Man Show. I am your host, Kevin King. He is I, and I am him, the 800 Credit Score Man himself. And once again, thank each and every one of you for coming in and listening to the 800 Credit Score Man Show. I truly, truly appreciate it. So let's, what's up, you guys? So let's see. What's been going on? So it's been a crazy week, week and a half. Yes, um, the uh, book, the e-book, Five Pillars of Credit came out on uh, the 20th of the month. If you haven't gotten your copy yet, go get your copy. Uh, Five Pillars of Credit by Kevin King. Go to Amazon and get your copy. If you say, well, I don't have a Kindle, I can't get an e-book. Yes, you too can get an e-book as well. So if you've got a phone, if you've got a smartphone, if you've got an iPad, if you've got a Mac for sure, you can get the uh, app, which is the uh, Amazon Kim. Uh, Kindle app you can get that app for free and you can absolutely get it so if you go to amazon.com and just put in five pillars of credit then it'll pop up you can go ahead and purchase it right there it's $2.99 people yes $2.99 so you want to support the show you want to uh, gift it to someone that you've been telling to listen to the show or somebody came to you and they want you to co-sign and you said, no way, I'm not doing that. Um, you know somebody's having some struggles with their uh, credit or what have you. You can also gift this book to them as well um, right there. So you go into um, Amazon.com. You can do it. if it, it will search your device. So whatever you're using, it'll search your device to see if you have a way to read it right now. If you don't, then it'll give you a suggestion. And that suggestion, most likely, probably 100% of the time, is going to be Amazon Kindle that you can get for free from your app store. So make sure you go get it. I know all of you haven't gotten it. Maybe you forgot about it. Maybe you forgot about that the book was out. But it is. It has been the number one new release in education um, since it launched. So since March the 20th, it's been the number one uh, book in, uh, number one new release in education at least and one other category since it launched. So go out and get yours. Make sure you tell all your friends, tell all your family. Go get this um, ebook, Five Pillars of Credit by Kevin King. You guys do that for me. I appreciate it. So what are we going to talk about today? Today we're going to um, talk about financing. Um, if I've, I've told you uh, plenty of times that um, if a subject continues to come up um, during the week or between times that I'm on the air, then I may just go ahead and, and and do a show around that particular subject. So for whatever reason, this week, a lot of conversation has been going on around financing and refinancing of vehicles. So we're going to discuss that today. If you don't think this applies to you, you should listen anyway. Continue to listen. You never know what little pearl I might drop in here. If you say, well, I have bought and sold and traded in 12 cars. I don't need any help in this particular uh, scenario or this particular situation. And you want to tune off, don't tune out because you may find something um, of education for you or maybe something to pass on to somebody else. So we're going to discuss that um, a little bit today. And we've got a really good um, question of the day as well. Uh, they contacted me through Twitter. They did a you know, DM through Twitter. So you can contact me too if you've got questions. And of course, I'll answer your question and it may hit the air. So you can contact me on Twitter at credit score underscore man on Twitter. You can catch me on all other platforms as 800 credit score man, whether that's on Facebook or whether that's on Instagram. You can catch me there and you can always email me directly 800 at creditscoreman.com that's 800 at creditscoreman.com you can contact me there with your questions if you got shout outs you want to shout out graduation season is coming i know some of you guys got some kids graduating from something kindergarten eighth grade high school college whatever it is contact me and i'll give them a shout out um on the show for their achievements and then if you got birthdays anniversaries whatever contact me for your shout out so we can get that on the show so let's talk a little bit about oh let me do this first shout out. Um, usually, of course, youngest among us. And uh, this young lady, Alexis Bryant, she celebrated her 18th birthday. So happy, happy birthday. She's already graduated high school and she's already enrolled and going to college um, already. So she did that in the middle of the year. She was able to graduate and enroll in college. And so she's already doing it and she's just turning 18. So happy, happy birthday to you, Lexi. Happy birthday. Um, I got to give a shout out to Warren Walls as well. His birthday was last week, so he should have got his 
um, shout out last week. So Warren Walls, this man, I'm putting you on notice. I know it's your birthday. My birthday's coming up in a couple of weeks, but this man makes the best German chocolate cake I've ever tasted in my life. So Warren, I'm putting you on notice. I appreciate a German chocolate cake for uh, my birthday. Thank you very much in advance. And I got to give a shout out to Renee Douglas as well. She's celebrating a birthday. This is my cousin. Actually, all of these people that I just mentioned are all related to me. So Renee Douglas, she celebrated her birthday on the 29th, I believe. So happy birthday to you, Renee. All right, so let's get into this financing and refinancing, especially of um, vehicles. That's what we're going to talk about today. So for whatever reason, this week, I've gotten a lot of questions about this all separately from different sources, from different platforms about financing or refinancing cars, mainly about refinancing cars. And then there was a long discussion with a few people chiming in on it on um, the Facebook group, Credit Score Comeback. So um, join that Facebook group, Credit Score Comeback, um, send a request in. I will absolutely get to it. Um, if you sent one in before and you haven't been approved, then send yet another one and I'll approve you for that particular group. And so we were talking about in that group and um, some several other places that um, contacted me this week about financing or if you should refinance your vehicle. Most people wanted to do so. They wanted to go ahead and refinance their vehicle. They were trying to figure out a way um, to get a new vehicle or what have you. And they were upside down, you know, all kinds of scenarios when it comes to um, purchasing vehicles. So um, that's kind of where the impetus of this particular um, show came from. So um, when it comes to this, you should know, you should know that the average car, the average car or vehicle, because you know, car or truck, the average car or truck loses over 50% of its value after the first five years. So they say when you drive off the lot, you know, you, you, you're you losing 20 to 30% as soon as you, you know, drive off the lot, depending on what kind of car you have. But absolutely, on average, 50% of its value is gone after five years. So keep that in mind. So while I was doing some research regarding the show, um, I was looking up to see, like, which cars hold their value the best? Like, which ones actually do? And every article that I read um, talked about um, the top 10 or the top nine cars um, that hold their value the best. Eight out of nine of those vehicles were pickup trucks. So it appears that pickup trucks hold their value better, more um, than any vehicle. Any vehicle that was out there pickup trucks actually held their value more. So eight out of nine of them were actually trucks. Um, the one car, I think it was a Subaru. It was a Subaru. Or maybe it was a Subaru Impressa was the one car. And this was consistent across um, my research. So keep that in mind as well when you're doing so. So let's talk about um, how this whole thing goes down and if you should finance or refinance your vehicle. So um, let's talk about this part first. So Let's talk about how if you go in to a car dealership and you want to trade your car, what happens? How does this work? So if you go in and let's say, and most of the time, you're upside down. Upside down meaning that you owe more on the car than the car happens to be worth. That makes you upside down. This puts you in a precarious, in a precarious situation regardless of what your credit score is. This is something that um, often we all would deal with at some point in time. So let's say you owe $10,000 and I'm not going to kill you with numbers today because I know some of you need to get like a pen and a pencil and a piece of paper to write stuff down so you can keep up with the numbers. So, um, you know, like your teacher used to tell you, show your work. I'm not going to make you show your work today. Just go ahead and you can listen. So it says if you owe $10,000 on a vehicle, here's how it works works if you're upside down. Oh, 10 grand, but your trade-in value happens to be $7,000. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that your car is only worth $7,000. That just means that's all they're willing to give you for it. If you were to go sell it privately to, you know, Joe Blow on the street or one of your relatives or whatever, you might be able to get more money out of it. But let's say, you know, you owe 10 grand for this particular example and the trade-in value that they're going to give you is 7000 They know they can get nine for it, but they've got to make some money, right? So, so this is what they're offering you for your vehicle. That means it's $3,000 left. There's the difference. 10000 minus the seven. There's $3,000 left. Now, that $3,000 is not forgiven. So what's supposed to happen? What's supposed to happen with that 
with that three thousand dollars it's got to go somewhere right so you've got to play you're responsible for that leftover money that three thousand dollars so typically if you go ahead and trade your vehicle in you get a new car what they'll do is they'll tack it that three thousand dollars onto your new loan and your new vehicle so here's how you run into you know issues sometimes so if you go and buy say a twenty five thousand dollar car and you add that three thousand dollars to it so now you're financing that three thousand dollar rollover if you will from the last vehicle that you had so now your loan is in twenty five thousand dollars and we're not talking about taxes and fees and title and all that stuff but if it's twenty five thousand dollars and you add that three grand your loan is not for twenty five it's for twenty eight thousand dollars and then that's what you're financing so then let's say what happens so you get this twenty five thousand dollar car and you got to add three grand to it it's twenty eight let's say your car isn't necessarily worth the new car isn't necessarily worth that $28,000. So let's say the bank says that the vehicle you're, you're buying is actually worth $26,000. So there's a difference in there. Your loan should be $28,000. And the bank is saying we are willing to finance $26,000 on this vehicle. The bank already knows that as soon as you drive off the lot, the vehicle is going to drop in value from this $26,000 to say 24,000 as soon as you drive off. So they're already taking you know, that into consideration, but they're saying your vehicle is worth 26 or they'll pay 26 for it. But you owe, because of that $3,000 trade-in uh, difference, you owe 28. So this $2,000, this is often when they come and ask, what's up with your down payment? Are you gonna give any money in down payment we need a down payment because the bank is only willing to finance 26. You got $28,000 worth of car and financing that you need, and you'll need that $2,000 as a down payment. That happens often. That happens when you're upside down and you go in. So now you know exactly how that particular thing works. Now, let's, while I'm thinking of this and thinking about negotiating and talking about, you know, how much you're going to pay for this car when you walk on the lot. When I told you before, you know, don't let them know what your financing is and all of those kinds of things, how much you want your payment to be and all that stuff. Don't come telling them that up front when they come and ask you. Same thing here when it comes to down payment. When they're walking around with you, they're asking you all these questions. How much of a down payment are you willing to give and all that? Do not give them that information. All that information feeds into how they can manipulate the numbers, if you will, how how much they're willing to be able to negotiate with you um, if they know that information up front. So if they know you have $2,000 that you want to put down on a vehicle, that's going to uh, make them move in a certain manner. You know, they know you have 2000 versus somebody that comes in and they don't have any money to put down or somebody that comes in and says, you know, I've got five grand and I'm going to put it down on the car. Then to their benefit, to their financial benefit, they make certain decisions. So this is also something that you don't want to tell them when you're walking around. So along with um, how much you want your payment to be, how long you want the term to be, um, you do not want to tell them um, how much you're going to put down on the vehicle. When they're asking about your trade-in, if you're not sure at this point if you're going to trade it or what, then that's information you don't necessarily want to um, tell them. Also, initially, they're going to find out when they do the paperwork. Initially, you don't need to tell them um, how much you owe on the vehicle. Don't tell them how much you owe on your trade-in at this point because then let's say you owe $10,000 on this vehicle and they might would have given you $10,000 on the vehicle, but people know how this particular system works. So they won't be surprised when they come, when they come back and say, we can only give you 7,000 from our example, we can only give you $7,000 in the trading in value. So don't tell them how much you owe on your vehicle when they're sitting there and they're pressuring you and they're asking you to call your bank or for you to give them um, the number or who's financing it. They're calling they're checking, they're trying to figure out how much you owe on this loan before they put their package together. All along, all these steps along the way, it's...